Good evening, Fernwood. It is your groveling Senator Neil, and it's time for us to get grounded and silly with another episode of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. We are watching episode 288 today from May 11th, 1977, and yesterday laid waste to two major storylines, so I think we better take a look back. We started yesterday's episode with Wanda telling everyone at the jail that she was in the shack as it was burned down. Merle is incredulous that Wanda would even be near Dewey, and she lets everyone know that not only was she there, but that Dewey was dead before Tom even got to the clearing. So it isn't possible that Tom could have killed him. And of course, this is a shock for everyone in the room. But Dennis Foley steps up and asks Wanda exactly how did Dewey die? Wanda's response is that Dewey was pleased to death, which means that Dewey died by orgasm. And of course, this catches everyone off guard as well. Merle insists that none of this can be proven, but Wanda pulls out her diary and says that the proof is in there and that Dewey's real name was Drexel Johnson, to which Mary responds, Drexel Johnson, the man that you had an affair with so many times? And that seems to be enough proof for Mary that Wanda has saved her husband's life. And Tom then goes to Tex and Vernon about their part in burning down the shack. Vernon tries to implicate Tex, who says, no, 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 it wasn't just me. You're the one who came up with all of the ideas. And then Sergeant Foley says that he's got to arrest the two of them as Tex takes Vernon hostage with a grenade and reveals all of the crimes that they were involved in, including the murder of Howie Freeze. Tex drags Vernon over to the cell door and opens it so that they can get out, but as he opens it, he accidentally pulls the pin out of the grenade. Vernon takes a run, and Tex goes after him to get help to put the pin back in. Sergeant Foley calmly tells everyone to duck, and the grenade explodes in the hallway just after Vernon says, You idiot. And as the dust settles and everyone comes to, they're clear that Vernon Bales and Texas are no longer alive. The next scene starts with Tom, Mary, and Heather coming home. Tom is just trying to take it in while Mary suggests that they go up to the bedroom. Tom seems more interested in grabbing a beer, which is something that they don't keep in the fridge since Tom was a recovering alcoholic. He's also surprised by the office setup in the kitchen since Mary took the job with Merle Jeter and before Mary can take Tom upstairs, Charlie and George show up to take him to celebrate his freedom. Mary is left alone and Dennis stops in and notes that Tom left her alone. Over at the Jeter residence, Merle is still fuming at the news that Wanda slept with Dewey, and this leads to a major fight between the two of them where they hurl all of their history together at each other, and it escalates and escalates and escalates until Merle starts to giggle and Wanda starts to chuckle and they both realize exactly how similar they have treated each other, exactly how much they belong together. Merle then suggests that they destroy the diary and Wanda pauses him for a minute, takes it from him, and says, I'm gonna do it myself. And finally, the boys are at the Capri Lounge as Mac walks in to greet Martha, and Tom gets caught up on the situation that George is jealous of Mac taking Martha's attentions. Tom then goes on about how everyone was so foolish to get involved with the GGG and how evil they were. And then the three men take a toast to Tom's freedom and Tom chugs his beer, enough that Charlie and George take a pause, and Martha brings over two more pints, and Tom double fists those drinks. Everyone, we have laid to rest two major storylines, and, well, I don't really know exactly what that means, but the floor is clear for the remainder of this series. We've got seven and a half weeks at this point, so we gotta do this. <laughs> Mary Hartman! Mary Hartman! Hi. Hi. 
Yeah, Did fun. you have a good time? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Did a lot you? of fun, yeah, sure, sure. We I tried to wait up for you and everything. Did you? But I couldn't do it. But I had fun. <laughs> no, I had fun too. I did, did too, you? yeah, sure. Sure, sure. I, I told my jailbreak story twice. <laughs> yeah, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I ordered a few beers. Just a few. I'm a bold a few lines, you know, and. Uh, before I knew it, I mean, I was completely lost track of time. Honest to God. Honest, Mary, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, that's okay. I understand, I really do. I just, I spent a, a quiet evening yelling at Heather. What do you mean? You're, you're not mad at me? Huh? You're not? Oh, God. <laughs> hey, I got the most wonderful, understanding wife in the whole world. I love you. Tom. What? Are you hungry? No, no. No, I mean, I've had, had pizza at the Capri. Oh. I see. No, it's just that I, 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 I forgot. I, I, I made some, um, you know, special uh, prime ribs and, you know, real potatoes and everything. But that's okay. I mean, there's no problem about that. You can always wrap them up, you know, as sandwiches. In fact, you could probably take them to work for the rest of the week. You can give them out to all the guys if you want work. to. Can you believe work? Can you believe that I'm... I'm, 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 I'm actually looking forward to work. <laughs> Is that incredible? Uh -huh. huh? I mean, you know, you're in prison a couple of times. I mean, you know, just for a little while. And you, uh... You begin to. Everything looks about ten times as good. Ever since. Mm. Oh, Tom. Oh, oh, mm. I'm going to tell you something. Look, I can't I tell cannot. you. No, I've waited. I've waited for so long, and so long to hold you in my arms in this bed. Mm. I'm going to tell you. How many times I used to just lie awake at night here, and I used to think, what crook is he, is in the next cell listening to him snoring tonight? What crook, when it should have been me there, it should have been me with you. Oh, Tom, mm. I love you. Hey, 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 I'm home, I'm home. I'm home for good, you know? What'd you think? Did you think I wasn't coming back, huh? Huh? Back here? Yeah. No. I need make it back home. You did? Yeah? yeah. How come? Well, because I just knew that you had a lot of pent up emotions in you from being in a jail cell, you know, like that's two by four, and that you had to get all that stress out of you. That's amazing. You know, I know you're so understanding and smart. How'd you know that, huh? Hmm? Dennis told me. Was Dennis? You mean, as in Dennis Foley? He, he, what he did was he tried to explain to me some of the things that you might be going through now, that's all. Well, what the hell does he know about what the hell I'm going through? I mean, you should know about that. You should know that. Do this now, please. Don't, don't do this now. You know, maybe, maybe I'm not the one who should be jealous. Maybe fully jealous of me. The time I spend with you, huh? You know, I'm beginning to think. I'm beginning to think that you need fully around here a hell of a lot more than you need me around here. Tom, where are you going now? Please don't do this. The last time you went out like this, you ended up in jail. Now, please, I really don't think I could take that again. Hey, look, let me explain look. something. No, let me explain something to you. Look, I need, I need some room to... I just got out of jail. I need room to breathe. I need some air. I maybe Foley didn't explain that to you either, huh? Hey, George! Hey, hiya, hiya. Hey, well, what's a beer, huh? It is now 10.35 and two seconds. An early bird catches the worm. An early drunk catches hell. Oh, come on, will you sound just like Mary? Hell, she doesn't understand why the hell I'm drinking. Look, I just got out of jail after four weeks. Hell, I'm celebrating. Look, I got to gun off my rocker.
here. Tickle my bird. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Look, I, I know this is a silly question, but uh, what are you doing? Well, now that Martha has gone off to be a stranger in the night, I figured I'd put my brain together and think about something besides hemorrhoids and, and excedrin headaches. What the hell is this? Uh, some kind of fancy crock pot? It happens to be an earthquake predictor. Oh, come on, George. We've never had an earthquake around Fernwood. <laughs> but a true genius, you see. You must believe that anything can happen. Now, watch this. Take your bird. Put it in a box. Take your snake. Very carefully. Very carefully. <clears throat> what kind of snake is that? Big. He's big, all right. My God. Where are you going to put him? Open the box. Open the box, will you, Tom? All right, all right, all right. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Just don't get him near me, will you? Mm -hmm. In there you go, Snake. Get in there and do your job. Now. Snake, bird in the box, right? Yeah. Okay. In the event of a possible earthquake, yeah. they get spooked, you see. Uh -huh. And the box starts to rattle. Uh -huh. And then I can go and measure the earthquake with all my dials here. <laughs> I'll tell you something, Tom. I am going to be a rich man. Oh, my God! God! It's a nurse break! Hit the doggy! Hit the doggy! Oh, hit it! Hit it! Oh, hit it. <laughs> that was no earthquake, George. Your snake just ate your bird. and spent ten bucks for that bird at Pet and Poochie's. Well, I guess you can always give the snake to Heather, I guess, huh? It's all right. Perseverance, perseverance. Edison, Franklin, Madame Curie, Doug McClure, Ryan O'Neill, Dinah Shore. You got to keep plugging at it. Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right, yeah. Yep, yep. If I kept plugging, I guess I could have made it, huh? Don't you think? Hmm? What? No, I could have made it. I could have been a big baseball star. Yeah, I, I guess that was a possibility. What do you mean? Well, Tom, let's face it. You weren't bad for Fernwood, but uh, Willie Mays, you weren't. Well, hell, I never had a chance. What do you mean you never had a chance? I never had a chance to be Willie Mays. Hell, I got married when I was too young. Then we had Heather right away. Hell, I had to go to work. I had to make a living. Hey, Tom, Tom, Tom. In this world, there are people who are destined to be movie stars. There are people who are destined to be baseball stars. There are people that are destined to be presidents. But, and then, there's you. What? Look, you're a regular guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. You work hard all day long. You bring home the burgers. Your family loves you. Most of the time, you're a regular guy. What are you saying? What are you saying? Are you saying that I'm meant to be a nobody? Oh, Tommy, Tommy, Tommy. What I'm trying to say is, look at Willie Mays. Where is he today? Selling pantyhose on TV? You have to have super hype to be successful. Yeah, you know, I guess you're right. I, I shouldn't take life so seriously. Look, O.J. Simpson, Joe Namath. What are they doing today? Making deodorant sexy. That's the answer. Sex and violence, that's the answer to success. Yeah, you're right. Look at the... What's that? Was that bug, bug spray, huh? Look at the commercials they have on TV for bug spray. Well, now you got it now. If you want to sell bug spray, make it violent. Bam goes the bee. Annihilate those ants. Kill those cockroaches. Gun down those silverfish. Oh, Tom. That's it. That's it. 
gun down those silver fish? What if a man made a bug spray that shot like a gun? I'll tell you something, Tom. I'm going to be the wealthiest man beyond my biggest dreams. Every man should have his can. Dennis. Hi, what are you doing here? I was just on patrol. It's part of a new, uh, new police program. I circulate in the community. Oh, well, that's very nice. I think that though now that you've circulated in, maybe you should circulate back out again. It's just the time been very touchy lately, and I think you just might misunderstand and think that you might be coming to see me. Well, Mary, uh, friends, which we are, keep in touch. Uh, touch? Mm -hmm. So, did uh, Tom make it home last night? Uh, yeah, he did. Uh, he came home late, and then he went out for a uh, walk again. And then this morning, he uh, he skipped breakfast and he took a uh, he took a six pack with him off to uh, my father's house. Have you had breakfast? Uh, no, and I'd love some. Well, uh, Heather says that the eggs are fertilized and she says the bacon has trichinosis, but you know, kids, so uh, it's up to you. Mm. Oh, bacon is nice. So is this. Being here with you like this. In fact, I don't think I've felt this homey since the times I used to have breakfast with uh, my parents. Uh, excuse me, but uh, didn't you once tell me that you were an orphan? Mary, I lied when I told you I was an orphan. So I wanted more than anything in the world to win your love. I, uh, I wanted you to care, so I made that up so you'd feel sorry for me. Oh, well, that is very sad. I mean, that's... A... It is very sad. Mary, they're going to be passing through Fernwood. Would you like to see them? Oh, me? Oh, no, I don't. Uh, I, I think that might be a little bit too upsetting, you know, to, to certain people, you know, like Tom. Uh, Mary, friends have nothing to hide, right? Well, I know you keep saying that, and I, I guess that's true. I, I do try to be more... Yeah, I'm going to be more determined to be more mature about this, definitely. Quick hide. No, okay. Okay, I'll handle this. I'll handle it. It's Wanda. She's an old hand at scandal. Hi, Mary. Hi. Uh, uh, this is, uh, Dennis Hurley. We have no absolutely nothing to hide. Our passions are absolutely dead. We're just only old, cold friends. Hello, Mrs. Jeters. Oh, how do you do, Sergeant Foley? Well, I was just getting back to patrol. Uh, goodbye, Mary. Yeah. Okay, and take care of Tom. Oh, I'll do that. Yeah. Bye, Mrs. Jeters. Bye. Coffee. Oh, love some. Yeah. Speaking of which, uh, there is absolutely nothing between uh, Dennis and me. Absolutely nothing. Mary, I, I came over here to apologize about Tom. Oh, hey, believe me, I, I never meant for him to go to prison. I, see, I just kept hoping that somebody else would set him free. Oh, Wanda. Oh, Wanda. 
Oh, Wanda. The only thing that matters is that we're back together and everything is normal again. Oh. It's back home. Oh, 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 am I ever glad to hear that. You know, Mira, I, you and Tom have always struck me as the perfect couple. We did? Mm -hmm. Perfect? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, you're so happy. Gee, really? <laughs> well, then maybe we are. <laughs> oh, I wonder if someone should tell Tom that. Show me the truth, Tom. Are you really like the idea? Yeah. Yeah, I do. The truth. I like the bug gun, George. Yeah, but see, that's the trouble. Liking it is not enough. Even though you are telling me the truth. I am. I'm telling you the truth. Do you love it? Swear to that on a Bible? Oh, for God. I'm getting the hell out of it. Oh, I'm getting wait. out. Oh, Tom, I'm Tom, getting Tom, out. Tom, wait a minute. I trust. Ah. I look, look I, I'm just not sure. I don't know if that <laughs> is any good or not. George, I'm telling you, I swear on my life, it's good. Is it great? Goodbye, George. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it, Tom, in spite of you! <laughs> Hi, Daddy. Sweetheart, you are looking at your father who is about to become a great man. Is that uh, soon or after dinner? Oh, I love it. I love it. All that, all that pessimism, all that. I love that. You know, that's the whole trouble with this country. Because there's no sense of direction in this country anymore. I don't want dinner. I'm going to go to bed. Good night, Daddy. Good night, sweet prince. Sis. <laughs> oh. Ah. Ah. Oh, come here. Hi, sweet face. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you just go right back in there. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, let's put you outside. Snakes don't belong in the kitchen. Have you ever heard that? Yeah. Cute little snake. We'll put you right here on the washing machine. Oh, the land of my forefathers. I am here at last. Oh. 
Oh. Uh, excuse me. Hi. Um, are you sure you're at the right address? The Haggers, they live only two doors down. Oh, no. I, I've made no mistake. No, I know this place as if it were my home. Uh, who are you? Well, I am a Standing Cow, formerly Esther Schneider. But I have traced my roots back to the land of Marquette Rock. Ah, uh, bad news, Standing Cow. My father smashed Marquette Rock with a hammer. It's all gone. So I guess you're going to have to try and find your roots somewhere else. Oh, don't worry, youthful squaw. No, this is still sacred ground. The spirits of my ancestors are not afraid of some bozo with a hammer. Ah. Well, so, uh, have you come here to live? No, my child. To die. Okay, y'all, this is the new direction. We start with the ground floor of Tom and Mary's relationship, and it really starts with a tender reunion that is then interrupted when Mary tells Tom that she's seen Dennis, and that sets him off in a jealous rage, which is really troubling, because I know that Mary isn't seeking Dennis out. I wish that Tom and Mary could talk about this. Tom and Mary have love for each other, but as we continue to repeat, they also have problems, and Dennis is a problem. So then we see Tom over at the Shumway home, and George is inventing, and it is such a silly invention, a, an earthquake detector, because we already have seismometers. The Richter scale is a thing for a reason. There are places that regularly see earthquakes. But anyway, it reminded me of the time before I was creating content and I used YouTube in the way of just creating playlists for myself of things I liked. And the, the weirdness of seeing George holding a tiny bird and then bringing a snake together reminded me of one of my favorite things on YouTube for a long time was uh, Rube Goldberg devices and chain reaction machines and I created a whole playlist of that so I will add my playlist right up here you can watch all of the things I kind of collected from the YouTube it was just that silly to see this thing and you know that when you put a small creature in with a snake I, I can see that they clearly set it up so that no creature was harmed you don't shoot something in America with the ability to actually end a creature's life. Well, the ability is one thing, but you make sure you protect the animals. But there was a comical amount of feathers <laughs> when we get back to that scene again, because we are in the Shumway house twice. And then George comes up with his idea of creating a bug gun, which, you know, something that we don't see. And it occurred to me that Tom and George are enjoying beers and they're still using pull tabs that have the disposable bits that end up on the floor. So, uh, you know, looking at actual problems versus kind of creating things that uh, just seem fun. Within five years, the pull tab was replaced. I don't remember exactly what year we went from pull tabs or pop tops to the current modern design that stays attached to the can, but yeah, I, I'm, there's at least a couple of generations of people who don't even know that we had pull tabs. So that was a thing that, that occurred to me. You know, it occurred to me when I first saw the pull tabs way back in season one. But, you know, there we are. Uh, however, the idea is for a bug gun, and also Tom is having some beers with George. And then we see Mary just innocently at home doing her thing and Dennis is there again. I know that there are some Mary and Dennis shippers do what you do, but I see Dennis pushing past a boundary that Mary has clearly set up. When Mary says, please don't stay here, she is concerned about the feelings of the person that she lives with. It's not a control thing because Mary is the person saying this. 
it's not like Tom is, well, I mean, Tom is fairly possessive and clearly very jealous. And Mary is being respectful of that. Mary doesn't even want Dennis's attention in this case. But Dennis pushes his way in, which is the way that I see him. I see him pushing past what Mary is comfortable with. That's my problem with him. Dennis insists on seeing the world his way. He even said that he lied to Mary at some point. I don't remember him saying that he was an orphan, but he clearly is demonstrating that he will manipulate the truth so that she has feelings for him. She wants nothing to do with this, but he wants everything. And even two weeks ago when he first came back, he said he would never see Mary, and now he's at Mary's place all the time. And they are interrupted by Wanda, who Mary is, seems kind of thankful for, to be honest. Dennis makes his way out, and then Wanda comes in to apologize for not having defended Tom earlier. Obviously, doing it in this way for a TV show was a lot more fun to have this fact just pop out at the last moment yesterday. Because, yes, Wanda could have been defending Tom, but we did see she was feeling a bit torn about him over the last few weeks. We still haven't had that reckoning with regard to Tom and Wanda sleeping together. So that's something I forgot about during this episode, but that is something that could be talked about. I don't think Wanda feels any guilt about it. Which, you know, if you're a person who cares about the way other people feel, you maybe should care about the way your friend feels. But Wanda doesn't, because ethically, I don't think she's set up that way. And the scene ends with Wanda saying how perfect Tom and Mary are together, and Mary being very happy to hear that, but also a bit perplexed, because she knows Tom doesn't feel that way. And then we are back at the Shumway home with George continuing about the bug gun and trying to eke a little compliment about the idea out of Tom. And they are sloshed. Like, I don't know how long it has been since the scene we saw them in before, but they've had a few beers and they're definitely not stable. And that's where Kathy comes in and we get a little bit of a transition scene between this half of the Shumway home and the second half of the scene. Kathy puts away the cute little snake. Snakes are very sweet. They will eat small animals because that's literally what they eat. I know the bird is safe, but it's still pretty surprising. She puts the snake away and then is interrupted by a woman in a uh, fairly fancy garb, but who claims to be a uh, some kind of has a name that seems vaguely Native American in the way that this show would do. She's somehow connected to the Marquette Rock. Kathy's question for her, this mysterious woman, I kind of forgot her name already, something cow, standing cow. Uh, Kathy's question for this woman is, did you come here to live? And the woman says, no, I came here to die. And this is a complete new thing in this show. The Marquette Rock was something that was brought up, but this character and this story is just going to have to unfold in front of us. So there we are, everyone. Thank you so much for watching with me. Thank you so much for leaving your thoughts, feelings, and impressions in the comments. Thank you for getting grounded and silly with me, and we will see you tomorrow night in Fernwood.